And welcome, indeed, to the BX 2015 Awards. Now, you may feel a little bit like the, uh, the guests at a private dinner that took place uh, on May the 16th, 1929, at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel in LA. That evening, as many of you will know, saw the first ever Academy Awards, with their inventor, Louis B. Mayer, later explaining that the best way to handle filmmakers was to hang medals all over them. If I get them cups and awards, they kill to produce what I want. Now that is a fantastic example of behavioral insight right there. And we're going to replicate a little bit of that tonight. These are the first ever BX awards. And like the Oscars, the plan is to make them an annual event, an annual celebration of excellence and endeavor in behavioral science. This conference, I think, has demonstrated the extraordinary range and variety of work going on, activity that provides insight into human behavior to help tackle poverty, to improve health and education, provide greater economic security, and just make things work better in so many ways that help societies to flourish. The BX 2015 Awards are an opportunity to recognize and indeed to reward the people on which this progress depends. Academics, some of whom, some of whose names are already well known. Upcoming scholars, the next generation of behavioral scientists, and indeed the, the practitioners actually applying behavioral science to change institutions, to change policy, change commerce, and to change society for the better. It does feel to me as though behavioral science has, has turned a bit of a corner, perhaps even just in the, in the last year. Media co coverage has has shifted, I think, from a kind of, sort of amused curiosity to a more respectful analysis as public and political institutions take the field also more seriously. And that shift is thanks above all to the rigor and indeed the perseverance of scholars like those whose work we're going to celebrate this afternoon. The Behavioral Insights team received scores of applications for these awards from around the world. Applications from Brazil, India, South Africa, the Netherlands, Norway, Israel, among many other countries. You are part of an international movement that threatens to change the world for the better. So in the spirit of those first ever Academy Awards, I'd like to introduce the two people who are going to play the part of Douglas Fairbanks jointly this afternoon your hosts for the inaugural BX Awards, ladies and gentlemen, the Managing Director of the Behavioral Insights Team, Owen Service, and Co-Chair of the Behavioral Insights Group at Harvard University, Professor Max Bazerman. Thank you, Mark. I'm just going to explain a bit about how we judge the awards, then I'm going to hand over to Max, who's going to give out the first award. So, Three awards are up for grabs, as Mark just said. We had scores and scores of applications. Um, and the team at BIT crafted a judging process using insights that we developed for fairness in recruitment processes. What we did was we anonymized every application. We removed all mentions of the institutions from which they were sent. And then each one was sent to four different members of BIT who judged them independently. The team members judging the applications looked in particular for the rigor ambition and originality, but also the social impact of the different papers and practitioners that we're about to award. Um, for each category, we then sent a shortlist to um, a shortlist of the applications to a BX judging panel, which was composed of the current and future hosts of Behavioral Exchange, Max Bazeman and David Halpern. We didn't give them any further criteria. We let them make up their minds, and we're about to give the first of those awards. Over to you, Max. Thank you. It's a real pleasure to be able to, uh, give a, to talk about the first award. Um, I'm a big, I've always been a big fan of the next generation. And before, uh, I, um, before announcing this award, I want to give a shout out to uh, uh, Michael Sanders, uh, the head of research um, for the Behavioral Insight Team, who's really done a phenomenal job of helping uh, bring along the next generation. Um, so I'm, I'm just thrilled to talk about the BX 2015 Award for Outstanding Research by a Doctoral Student. 
We've ha we had a, a, a large number of excellent papers on topics from troubled families, water use, road safety, um, innovative behavior, and I'm proud to announce that the winner of this award goes to a double-edged sword, how and why resetting performance metrics affects performance by Heng Shen Dai. Um, Heng Shen, please join us up on the stage. Okay, back to work over here. So, Heng Shen, can you share with us the inspiration for this work? Okay, uh, so I think many of you may have the same experience, but you don't want to admit, that's okay. I'm gonna admit that I often experience what the hell effect that Dan really uh, mentioned this morning. So I realized what worked for me when I was even a kid was I like to make resolutions uh, at the beginning of a Chinese New Year, new semester after my birthday, which allowed me to put my imperfections behind myself, and so I have long been interested in the effects of having a fresh start in uh, people's personal lives created by themselves or by other people, how that can affect their motivation uh, to pursue personal goals and improve their performance, and that's where the idea comes from. So I think for this award, um, I really appreciate that, but I don't want to have a restart based on my research finding. Instead, I want to <laughs> continue my uh, momentum. Thank you. Thank you so much, and congratulations. I also want to note that honorable mention for this award uh, goes to Sayam uh, Banout for rank and response, uh, Yana, Yana Gallas for fostering voluntary contributions, and to Philip Newell for how bookies make, um, make your money um, where he looks at the dark side of nudges. Um, so congratulations to all. We're we were delighted to read your wonderful work. Excellent. So the second award is the BX Award for Outstanding Research, and it's intended, of course, to recognize academic, academic achievement in the behavioral sciences. The judges were looking in particular for research that demonstrated rigor in the way that the research was conducted, that showed high levels of originality, but also had a clear line through to social impact. And despite this tough set of criteria, we had loads and loads of um, applications and the field was highly competitive. But I think it's fair to say that one paper and one set of researchers stood out above all others. Ladies and gentlemen, in their paper, Poverty Impedes Cognitive Function, and Andy Manny, Sendal Mullanathan, Elder Shafir, Jiajing Zhao, used a set of lab experiments and field studies to test the hypothesis that poverty directly impedes cognitive function, and indeed, Elder Shafir spoke a lot about this paper yesterday in his talk. Um, in the first study, our researchers experimentally induced thoughts about finances, and they found that this reduced cognitive performance among the poor but not well-off participants. And they then ran that second, altogether more ambitious field study involving Indian sugarcane farmers. The implications seem to me to be clear and profound. Poverty-related concerns consume mental resources, which affects our ability to perform other tasks. So to collect the BX 2015 Award for Outstanding Research, on behalf of her team, please welcome from Warwick University, Dr. Anandi Mani. Congratulations. Andy, we were just talking about the fact that the really, really impressive thing about your paper um, is the consistency of the findings and the size of the effects. Can you talk us through that? Were you surprised by the findings at all? Um, well, I wasn't surprised by the direction of the findings, but to be honest, I didn't, we didn't have strong priors about what the magnitudes would be. Um, and um, I think we, uh, the idea was not, when we did the studies, not so much to have consistency necessarily in the magnitudes that we got between the field study and the lab study, but sort of to see whether 
uh, the same mechanisms were in uh, operation and that we could uh, show them differently in both settings. And so the fact that they turned out to be similar in magnitudes was something that we were not expecting and we felt uh, reassured by. And um, I'll say that in follow-up work that I'm uh, doing with a, a few other co-authors, Sendil being one of them, um, in, in Kenya with unconditional cash transfers, and this is for farmers, we are finding some similar magnitudes which is you know, making me feel reassured because it's a field study and again, you know, I'm, I'm not sort of telling these farmers what to say. So uh, it's, it's not a, uh, it, it, it's sort of doubly reassuring, not only for internal consistency across the lab and the field, but also in follow-up studies. Excellent, well, let's um, applaud Anandi again for her excellent paper. <laughs> accept the award on behalf of all my co-authors who've been great as it is. Thank you. Um, and like the other awards, we, we just had another set of honourable mentions for, for another batch of excellent papers. The first of them was the paper Stick It to the Man, a randomised controlled behavioural nutrition intervention with adolescents by Christopher Bryan, David Yeager, Cynthia Inuyosa, Amy Chabot, Holly Bergen and Mari Kawamura. There was another honourable mention for domestic uptake of green energy promoted by Opt Out Terrace by Felix Ebeling and Sebastian Lotz. And finally, um, using certainty and celerity of sanction to produce specific deterrence, insights from a large scale implementation of the 24 7 sobriety program by Bo Kilmer, Nancy Nicosia, Paul Heaton, and Greg Midget. So I think I'd urge you, maybe we'll uh, uh, put up on the website all of these papers so that you can download them after the conference and, and read them yourselves. Back over to Max for the final trophy. So as an academic, it's been a real joy to see what's happening on the front lines. And our um, third award is meant to recognize outstanding um, contributions by practitioners. So the BX um, Award for Outstanding Practitioners Thought, sought applications from the front line where people are putting these ideas into use. And we received applications from the UK, the US, the Netherlands, Singapore, India, and elsewhere, and read about promising work across so many domains that so many of you are working on in a wonderful um, way. So for their comprehensive and pioneering work establishing the first dedicated behavioral sciences team in, in, in Australia policymaking, and their range of successful tri trials and interventions since 2012, the BX 2015 Award for Outstanding pra Practitioners goes to Amitai Doram, Roy Gallagher, Shabnan Gill, Alex Guiana, and Simon uh, Radzma for applying behavioral insights in New South Wales. To collect the award, please welcome Amitai uh, Doram to the stage. So you have the tough task of telling us about the inspiration of your entire team and um, what leads you to do the amazing things that we all know uh, are going on in, the New South, uh, in New South Wales. Okay. Thank you. I'm um, absolutely delighted to receive the award on behalf of our team um, and the New South Wales government as well. I think our inspiration is really uh, goes to the core of, of what Behavioural Insights is about, which is about making a difference uh, to people's lives. So really uh, what we work towards is uh, improving our services at the front line um, and how we work with uh, our citizens on the ground. But it's also about value for money. So uh, all our early work has really been about proving the concept. Uh, about how we can generate value for government, value for taxpayers and, and our community. Uh, look, I just want to make, uh, recognise all the contributions of people that have been involved in our work. Uh, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the senior sponsors uh, in the New South Wales government, so that includes our Premier, uh, Mike Baird, uh, and also his staff, uh, and senior sponsors in our own agency, uh, as well as across the government. 
Um, I also like to really acknowledge the contributions of our team and that includes uh, the Behavioural Insights team from the UK who's partnered with us since the beginning. Uh, so, and particularly Rory Gallagher and Alex Giani, who've worked uh, with a lot of dedication, passion uh, and commitment to really turn these trials around and uh, deliver some really strong resu results. But also our core team and the other members who are up on the uh, screen there uh, wouldn't be possible without all of their contributions. But lastly, I'd also like to thank our partner agencies. So we work uh, across government and it involves uh, the time, the commitment and the resources of our other departments, their staff and frontline workers as well. So um, with that, uh, thank you and thank you to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful work. We're inspired by what you do, and we're inspired by the work of many other units. And I want to um, note that honorable mentions for um, outstanding practitioners go to the following. Um, Kayla Bajas, um, Carly Llewellyn for OPower, using behavioral science to drive energy savings. The Behavioral Design and Insights Unit and Ministry of Manpower in the Singapore for transforming policy and service delivery with behavioral insights and design. And to Jorn Horseman and Jerome Seabelt and um, uh, I'm missing a first name, Dijksterhaus and Ben Barren in the Netherlands for bee riders turning motorists into cyclists by using insights from behavioral science. Um, I want to close by thanking um, all of you who applied for these awards for doing the amazing work you do, and I want to congratulate our winners one more time, um, and thank you for your outstanding contributions.